Welcome to the Living Witness Broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Derek Thomas, and my prayer today is that the message blesses you and inspires you to be all that you can be, to reach the world with the life-giving word. Enjoy today's message. God bless. Those that would and those that can, I would just for a moment, if you would stand for the reading of God's word and what you'll find written in 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Right. Verses 45 through 51 reads as follows. I'm reading from the uh, English Standard Version. If it's, a little, if it's a little different than yours. Then David said to the Philistines, uh -huh. you come to me with a sword yes. and with a spear uh -huh. and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, yes. the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Uh -huh. This day, somebody say this day. This day. this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Uh -huh. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear. Uh -huh. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand. Uh -huh. Yes. When the Philistines arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone, the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword. Yeah. And drew it out of its sheath and killed him uh -huh. and cut off his head with it. Yeah. When the Philistines, Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Uh -huh. As you take your seats, give somebody a high five and tell them this. Tell them, neighbor, neighbor. it's on. It's on. Amen. It's you may on. be seated. It is on. on. Amen. Oh. I've been... I've been dealing with the news this week, uh -huh. and I want to select my words carefully here because I'm driving at a point. I've been dealing with the news this week because in the midst of fasting, First Lady and I are in, in, in involved in, and engaged in a fast that's winding down, uh, at, and Living Witness Ministries is a part of it, and we're fasting, we're, we're, we're calling it an Elijah fast because we're fasting not only for our church, we're fasting for our church secondarily, we're fasting for the nation and for the world yeah. primarily, amen. And each of us are chosen, have chosen to take one thing that, that, that we feed off of uh -huh. and fast from it. And one thing that I've learned about fasting, if you've all fasted, I'm sure you all have. When you deny yourself voluntarily of something, the involuntary nature that drives you to get whatever it is that you're fasting yourself from kicks into high gear. Amen. Uh, I'm a news hound and, and I love the news and, and because I'm doing pretty good with, with, with my food because I'm staying where I want to stay and we praise God for that, that, that I said I'm going to fast from the news because I, I can sit in my office and have the news on eight hours a day and not get tired of it. Ten hours a day and I'm good. I might take a break after 12 hours. My wife was like, how do you keep the news on all day? And I'm like, I need to know what's going on in the world that I live. And therein lies the challenge. Far too many of us that profess the name of Christ spiritually have no idea what's going on in the world in which we live. We're blind and ignorant to the reality of what God desires us to do. We're blind and ignorant to the reality of how God desires to move in and through us to make a supernatural impact in the earth. So what happened was I, I said that I'm going to fast from the news during my work day and I'm just going to get caught up at, at, at the end of the night at 10 o'clock. Just kind of get it caught up just for that day's work so I don't overdo it. And what I found each night as I listened to the news is that whether it was violence or whether it was theft or whether it was just lasciviousness of every sort, the news was dominated with stuff that just left my spirit vexed. It was dominated with stuff that just left me feeling so distraught. It was dominated with stuff that long after my wife was asleep, I'm lying there saying, Lord, how much longer? Lord, what's happening in the world today? And as I was wrestling with getting this message together, I was reading through the word in my study time and I hit this passage of scripture. And as I hit this declaration that David 
said something was jolted in my spirit. I began to get a new attitude, Pastor. I began to get a new mindset, Elder Jacob. I'm like, I'm not going to settle for the okie doke anymore. I'm not going to sit around on the sidelines and watch the enemy run roughshod through our children and through our communities. I'm not going to say that I'm okay with gun violence. I'm not going to say that it's fine to overdose. I'm not going to say that it's okay to sleep with other people's wives and husbands. I'm not going to say that it's okay to play church. Devil is on right now. You come to me with all this nonsense, but my Bible tells me that God for me is more than the whole world against me. So while I'm laying here being distraught, I don't have to be distraught because I've got the answer already. It's time for me. If I was a lady, I'd be taking my earrings off right now. If I was a dude, I'd be taking my jacket off right now. I'm like, devil, it's on. We're done with this. We're done with you taking our children. We're done with you playing in our churches. We're done with you getting in our business. We're done with you messing with our stuff. We're done. Yes. See, Pastor had the right idea when he came in to worship this morning. Yes. Pastor came in to worship with a we ain't having it spirit. Yes. And a we ain't having it spirit simply says, Devil, we ain't having it. I, I don't care what I've been through this week. Yes. I don't care what's been going on. That's right. I don't care how I feel. I don't care, Sister Marion, what the doctor's report says. Right. I don't care what's going on. I don't care if there is more month than money. I don't care if my kids are out of pocket. I don't care if my wife and I are on two different plans. I don't care what's going on that should be, what's not going on that should be. My mind is made up, and I'm fully persuaded that I'm not letting anything separate me from the love of God, which is found in Christ Jesus. So, devil, I hope that that was your best because I'm still standing. And as long as I'm still standing, as sure as you send an attack, I've got a counter attack so you swung and did what you thought was your best if you thought that hurt wait till I swing back yes sir it's on it's on because it's on time is out for the time is out for the dumb stuff it's on my mom used to say enough is enough enough is enough and too much stinks and as I was laying there I realized I smell something I don't like right now but it wasn't something I smelled of natural. See, I smelled the, 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 the sulfur and the nastiness of the enemy in the spirit. And the enemy is trying to run a rough shot right in through here. We're in the midst of a series at LWM on the greatness code. It's a code that God is building into us because he desires us to stop being good. Amen. And he desires us to move into being great. He wants us to become godly. He wants us to be ready. He wants us to be extraordinary. He wants us to be anointed. He wants us to be truly committed. He wants us to be great. God did not call you church to be good because good accepts stuff like this. Good is like, okay, as long as it's not messing with me, that's fine. Good is saying that as long as it's not me, mine, and ours, I'm good with it. But great says I'm standing for righteousness sake. Great says I'm crying loud and fair and not. Great says I'm visiting the orphans and the widows. Great says I'm making provision. Great says I'm going to the front lines. Not worried about my life but about saving others. All right. God wants us to walk boldly in every area of our lives. Amen. Amen. God needs us to walk like David walked in this instant. Yes, Lord. Now let me paint a picture real quick that I'm going to sit down because I'm already halfway through. What happened was this. Goliath had been running his mouth. Day in and day out. Goliath stood about nine feet, nine feet-ish. Mm -hmm. Pretty big. Yes. Pretty big sword, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Come on. Talking all kinds of stuff, throwing all kinds of wolf cookies out there. Uh -huh. Saying what he's going to do, everything he's big enough, bad enough, and bold enough to do. Yes. And the soldiers had gotten afraid. Uh -huh. The soldiers had gotten scared. Uh -huh. The soldiers had settled for being good soldiers. Yes. They listened to their commanding officer who also was walking in fear. But David knew who God was. Amen. David knew who God was. Catch this. David knew who God was at a relationship level. Yes. Yes. 
he didn't know God from a religious dynamic. In other words, he didn't just go through the motions with God. Because before David made this declaration, he had already rationalized in his mind. The Holy Spirit flipped the roller decks in his head back to the town where he killed one animal with his bare hands. He killed, killed a lion and, and, and he killed the bear. In other words, he had been outnumbered. He, he had been outmanned. He, he had been out strategized. He, he had been out planned. He, he had been in a position where death was supposed to be imminent. Yet in the face of death, God still brought him out victorious. So David said, guess what? I'm about sick of listening to you talk about my God. I'm about sick of you doing this thing to be disrespectful to my God. I'm about sick of you doing this thing in a way that puts my people down. Say something about my God one more time. Say something about my people one more time. Say something about my worship one more time. We got to get that brazen. We've got to get that sincere. And religion's not going to do it, church. The R and the greatness code is for being ready. And God needs us to be ready. Amen. Amen. He needs us to be ready to be confident in doing what it is that God has called us to do. Amen. We got to be confident in this thing that we proclaim. Amen. Amen. See, the worst thing you can do is go out mm-hmm. and proclaim something that you don't believe. Yes, yes. I, I was never in one growing up, but I remember in the, in the gang scene down in Illinois, when I was growing up, everybody's like, what you ride? What you stand on? What you ride? What you stand on? Uh-huh. In other words, what do you believe? Yes. What do you stand on to the point that if it means you're giving your very life, uh-huh. you're willing to give your very life for? There's an age old adage if you don't stand for something, you will. And we have far too many people uh-huh. that have said yes to Jesus. Yes. We have far too many folks that are going to church and not coming to worship, yes. that are falling for anything. Yes. Because they're taking what we're doing here as nothing more than a religious exercise. They're doing this like you go to the gym. They're doing this like you go to work. They're doing this just like it's something to do. It's one of the first things you check off on your list of things to do during the week. But I'm here to let you know that worshiping God is a Sunday through Sunday proposition. You might need him as your intercessor on Monday. You might need him as your way maker on Wednesday. You might need him as your deliverer on Friday. You might need him as your hope on Saturday. You don't know how you're going to need him, but you've got to have a relationship. And when you have a relationship with God and God comes through with you and the devil comes to you with some nonsense to mess with you and yours, you say, "Uh uh-uh, enough is enough. Enough is enough. All right. It's on. Church, we got to start saying enough is enough. Yes, Lord. When we can be in our parking lot here, at the church and hear gunshots on any given night. Uh-huh. When we can be getting in our cars and witness drug deals through the fence. Uh-huh. When we can be driving up the street and see fights break out. Yes. And we okay with that? No. Come on. Enough is enough. Devil is on. Yes. It's on because you're not going to disrespect my God that way. You're not going to disrespect the house of God that way. Watch this. You're not going to disrespect God's people that way. The devil might say, well, they're not God's people because they're doing all kinds of stuff. My Bible tells me that each and every one of us are fearfully and wonderfully made. That means that only God can create us. So if only God can create us, only God can change us, only God can save us, who are we to say that they're not worth saving? God thought that you and I was worth saving. He sent somebody to pray for us. He sent somebody to witness to us. He sent somebody to lay hands on us. He sent somebody to encourage us. Who are we not to go out and do the same thing? We've become timid in proclaiming the good news because in proclaiming the good news, we got to do it when we feel like it and even more so when we don't. Amen. We got to do it when it's convenient and when it's not. The word puts it this way. Preach the word. Be instant in season. And out of season. 
in season is times like this. See, the world has said that in season is Sunday during the 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock hour. In season is either Tuesday night or Wednesday night for about an hour. In season is when you're around other saints. But I beg to differ. I say in season is at every, any and every time that the Holy Spirit gives you ocean to open up your mouth. Some of the most effective sermons weren't exegeted out. Some of the most effective sermons didn't have a Christology. Some of the most effective sermons simply said that the Lord saved me and I'm glad about it. Let me tell you what he's done for me because if what he's done for me is any indication of what he'll do for you, I'm rejoicing right now for you. I don't even see where you are, but I already see you at the mountaintop. I already see you on the other side. I already see you victorious. What am I saying? I'm saying, church, we need to start rejoicing now for the other 500 that are coming. That's right. We need to start rejoicing now for the multiplicity of services. We need to start rejoicing now for when we're starting to use technology in a way that, that puts the devil to shame. We need to start rejoicing now for the victory that God has us walking in. Why? Because we're proclaiming the good news. Amen. That's right. We're not presenting no watered down gospel. We're like David. We're making it clear. Devil, here's what's about to happen. Uh-huh. We about to stand on the promises of God. Yes, sir. Because the promises of God are yea and amen. That's right. We're about to boldly go forth and do the work of ministry. Yes. Because the word says, when any, any two or three gather together in my name, that you'd be in the midst. Yes, sir. We're getting ready to wreak havoc and run roughshod over the plans and schemes and tricks that you place out there. Because my Bible says that if when you pray, you believe and not doubt, you'll have whatsoever you say. So my Bible lets me know that this whole block is about to belong to unity. That this whole neighborhood is about to belong to unity. Because they're saying to the leader, to the man of God, that every place the sole of your foot treads is going to be given to you as an inheritance. That means long after Pastor Smith is resting with the Lord, whomever God appoints after him is going to have it to keep it moving. And then after that to keep it moving. And after that to keep it moving. So we need to rejoice right now because the devil's doing all he can to keep us from doing the work. But we've got to look the devil in the eye and say, devil, not today. It's on. It's on. It's on. Not today. It's on. It's on. Because what we have has been given to us by Christ as an inheritance. Amen. The word lets us know in Joshua 1 and 9, have I not commanded you? Mm-hmm. Be strong and courageous. Yes. Don't be frightened. Yes. Mm-hmm. Don't be dismayed. Here's why. For the Lord your God is with you yes. wherever you go. Amen. 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 We can rejoice in that. That's right. We can stand flat footed in front of the enemy. Mm-hmm. He can bark out what kind of threats and curses he want to bark out. But at the end of the day, all he's doing is making noise, church. Amen, that's right. But here's the thing. I love going to the movies. And one of the first times that I went to a movie theater that had surround sound, mm-hmm. it messed me up. Because I wasn't expecting all that rumbling. I wasn't expecting all those high notes and all that bass to be behind me and be above me and be beneath me and all that stuff. And it was one of those action movies, one of the action suspense things, right? Mm-hmm. So when the noise hit... I was about to get up and start running. I ain't going to lie. But catch this. I need you to catch this. But before I got up and embarrassed myself, Uh I had to remember where I was. I had to remember the circumstances that brought me Mm -hmm. to where I was. I wasn't brought there against my own will. I drove to the movies. I chose to watch the movie. I chose to watch the movie Catch This because it was something designed to entertain me. It was something designed to take my mind off of life. It was something for me to get to delve into to enjoy, but to come out of because it was not real. So when the sound hit, I started to get up and take off running. It's like, wait a minute. You ain't got to do that because it's not real. 
It's going to be over an hour. It's going to be over an hour and a half. It's going to be over in two hours. What am I saying? To God, a day is like a thousand years. You might be hearing rumblings of, of death. You might be hearing rumblings of confusion. You might hear, be hearing rumblings of attack against your family, attack against your finances, attack against your ministry, attack against your health. But I'm here to let you know, don't you run nowhere because the word says that we can be confident in knowing that we can be strong and courageous and we don't have to be frightened because the Lord is going to be with us everywhere we go. If we're at the mountaintop, God is there. If we're in the valley, God is there. If we take the wings of the morning and soar whatever direction we want to soar, God is there. We don't have to worry about anything. All we got to worry about is what the devil's going to do when he looks in our eyes and sees we ain't playing. Because when my mom said enough is enough, Pastor, if you knew my mom, well, you know, because I, Mother Smith is, yeah, when she says enough is enough. That means enough is enough. Enough is enough is a wrap. It's done. And don't fool around and let her double down and say because I said so. Man, look, you can forget that. But that's the approach we've got to take with the devil. And see, that's the approach that David took with the devil. David got detailed. Not only am I going to take you out, but let me let you know in the name of Jesus how I'm going to take you out. I'm going to take you out so bad that when all is said and done, I'm going to cut the head off of you and leave your body for the, for the animals to eat. I'm going to cut the head off so that there's no coming back for you. I'm going to make sure that my victory is decisive. The enemy wants nothing more than to make us think that we have no power. But my word tells me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world which means I have the capacity to tread on serpents and scorpions I have the capacity to drink deadly things and they not harm me I have capacity to lay hands on the sick and they recover I have the capacity to bind those things on earth and they're bound in heaven I have the capacity to loose those things on earth and they're loosed in heaven I have the capacity to make my own smoke in the city. Amen. Yes, yes. We so busy looking for smoke to see what the action is. Guess what? Mm-hmm. We're the source mm-hmm. of our own action in the spirit. Amen. Yes. Yes. We got to be confident as we achieve victory for Christ. Amen. Amen. See, David was confident no matter how crazy it sounded to everybody else. Because as I read this, I realized, okay, nobody else went out there but David. Mm-hmm. Nobody went but David, right? Just make it look, nobody went for David, right? Right. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, yes, sir. No shade. <laughs> so, watch this. Only David went. Amen. Five stones, right? Right. Okay, again, just making sure. <laughs> Checking my Wikipedia. <laughs> Five is a number of grace. Amen. It wasn't about what David had done. Wasn't about what David was doing at that point in time. Watch this. Wasn't about what David was going to do that fell below board and below what God's standard is. But what it is, is that because David was willing to stand on the promises of God, because David was willing to say enough is enough, because David was willing to go when nobody else would go, to go when everything was malfitted, to go when he was outnumbered and outmanned, to go after prophesying something that looked crazy to everybody else, because David was available and ready to go, God sent his amazing grace with him. And when that amazing grace was activated, in my faith, all it took was one shot to put that giant down. Whatever it is that you're going through, as long as you've got God's grace with you, whatever it is you're going through, as long as you know that God for you is more than the whole world against you, as long as you're able to go, my Bible says that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So what David did He went out when nobody else would go. God's grace went with him. Mm -hmm. Gave him the victory just like he said he was going to have the victory. And a funny thing happened. After the vision came to pass, the word says, I paraphrase that Goliath's supporters ran. They left. But if you read on, it says that the individuals were with David, the army was with David, they began to advance. See, God is using you and I, church, 
to usher in a new advancement in the spirit. Amen. He's using us to usher in a new advancement in this community, a new advancement in this day, a new advancement in this city to come against all the violence, to come against all the gun violence, to come against the pandemic, to come against broken homes, to come against kids out of control, to come against broken families. But what we've got to do, church, is we've got to stand up and say, enough is enough. We're going to stop being at each other's throats. We're going to stop being double-minded. We're going to stop being confused. We're going to stop having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. We're going to get back to doing our father's business. We're going to get back to doing this thing God's way. We're going to get back to looking the devil in the eye and not looking down at the ground to help him see that he's under our feet. Because at the end of the day we only got two words to say to the devil. One of my favorite wrestling factions, DX said that we got two words for you, devil. Yes. Got two words for you. And they're not the words y'all thinking. I saw that, Brother JC. You can do that, but the two words we got are it's on. Amen. It's on. Come on, stand to your feet and give God praise. Oh. It's on. Living Witness Ministries is a church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life-giving word. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955-8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness.